All right, so we see that, you know, how these uh, pirate filmmakers, you know, eventually left to create Hollywood. Edison's a reptile, um, you know, all that stuff. But I love Duncan Trussell. So, um, again, how did we get to this point in the world? I'd like to talk a little bit about the Copyright Act of 1909. Listen, there's a lot of stuff on the slide, right? Not that important. It's there for your information because I know you're like, you're into this. You're like, I want to know more. Um, but you can see all of the amendments in the Copyright Act of 1909. This was our third Copyright Act. We actually only have four. So we have the original one, one of 1897, one of 1909, and 1976. Those are our four are four copyright acts, right? Pretty, pretty dated stuff. But what I want you to know about this is that the main importance of this, write it in your notebook, okay? Write it in your notebook. This will be on the test. Is that the Copyright Act of 1909, right, made it so that corporations could be authors. It recognized corporate authorship. This is vastly important because before this, the only authors recognized by copyright law were natural authors, us, human beings. After this, a corporation could be recognized as an author, and this then changed so, so many things. And this is just so, so important to the history of all this, because what starts to happen after this is because corporations can become authors, they can basically uh, lobby, bully <laughs> and change the laws to reflect their personhood. Now, a corporation as a person, the important thing to understand is a corporation never dies. So therefore, perpetuating copyright for as long as possible is a great thing because you never die, you just go bankrupt, you know. But we die. That's why when we look at like, you know, copyright lasts for our life plus, you know, 7 years, it doesn't make a lot of sense to us. Well, it's because when you add on years for the corporation, corporate authorship, you have to add on years to the um, you know, natural people authors. And that's a very important part of all this. So I want you to know that corporate authorship is recognized in the 1909 Act. They did not recognize in this act, though, um, films. Okay, Motion pictures were recognized in the Townsend Amendment Act of 1912. Again, this will all be on the test. So just kind of have a little familiarity with, with this. Okay, This protected filmmakers against piracy, but not ideas, meaning filmmakers could still borrow ideas from one another or copy, you know, pretty verbatim. Um, you know, they could also take ideas from books and stuff like that. That eventually changed. Okay, But really know that in 1909, the importance was corporations could become authors because guess what they're fucking people because they're people they can become authors they enjoy the right of free speech they own the enjoy the right of um you know uh, of property ownership of being able to sue to go to court many of the the rights that people own natural people own have been extended to corporations but they could become authors most copyrighted works are actually authored by us natural people. We, we create many of them all the time. I'm making one right now with this video. Is it worth any money? Oh, hell no. Right? There's a very, very small, like, it's so small, a percentage of works that are made that are copyrighted that have market value and a lot of value in the marketplace. And everybody has to play by those rules. And most of those works are authored by companies. It is what it is. Okay. So how did we get to corporate personhood? How could a corporation become a person? Okay. Now, the thing I want you to understand is the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights is all the oopsies. We should have had this in the Constitution because every rule federal rule in the United States is based upon the Constitution and interpretations of the Constitution over time. So things like, you know, the right of freedom of speech, oops, freedom of religion, oops, we forgot about it, you know, oh, uh, you know, um, uh, black people are people, um, uh, you know, slavery is, is illegal unless you're a criminal, that's the 13th Amendment. Under the 14th Amendment, which was giving basically um, newly freed slaves 
slaves um, personhood in the United States, recognizing them as citizens, as human fucking beings, right? That's the same amendment to the Constitution in which corporations argue that they were people too. So we're going to watch a little video um, from, from a freaking long documentary on the corporation called The Corporation. It features some of my least favorite people, including Noam Chomsky, who freaking annoys me. Um, but anyways, um, it's about the 14th Amendment. And I want you just to see like how it works and, and how you know this gave corporations personhood. So corporations get personhood in 1868, and then they become authors in 1909. So we'll watch this short documentary, which is Canada's most popular, and then we'll come back and we'll continue to work through the history here.